Okay, now I want to cover um, something that I've covered before and it's in the past and it's called the psychology of singing. You know, often we get freaked out by the high note, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, gosh, can I do that tomorrow night, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. Well, what I'm doing here is what I've developed with this system is a system to eliminate the moving targets that seem to move night after night to keep us or inhibit our ability to nail these notes night after night. If you do it the way I show you, and if you build up the core and the stamina of what I'm showing you, and you do it slowly, you don't slam yourself into it, you don't work your way into it too quickly, you're going to find that it gets easier and easier and easier, and the voice starts to develop. And instead of song eight in the course of a 12-song set at night or whatever it is you do, uh, and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm done and I can't finish the set, you're going to actually feel stronger almost, or in many cases, to the point where you're feeling like, gosh, I wish I could go back and re-sing this set. I feel so much more robust and stronger now. I feel like I could do a better job. Because you you paced yourself and you worked your way up into the set and you warmed up into that set. So, all right, with that said, I want to talk about the psychology of singing. You know, I've used this example before, but it's worthy of using again. Uh, we, we often sing and see the national anthem being sung and, you know, you know, oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in it. Right? So you go through this whole song, they go, land of the free. You know, people choke on the last note if they even try it at all, right? And there's this thing about being scared of the last note. The irony of it is, is that someone forgot to tell them that they already sang that note. They already sang that note. And the rocket's red glare. And seldom do they ever have trouble with rocket's red glare. The land of the free. It's the same note. Now, had they known that before, and had they gone into it with the idea, oh, you know, I already sang that note. It's a, this is just another note in the set. I don't really, you know, another note in the song. Then all of a sudden, the psychology of tensing up and freaking out to get to that last note really relieves us of the pressure of feeling like we can't hit the note. So what if I was to tell you that it's no longer about the high notes. It's about vowel modifications, proper support, proper posture, and something we're going to learn about in volume three, glottal compression, or the ability to hold your breath and literally hold your air back when you sing to keep too much air from passing across the cord to keep the cord from drying out and going hoarse and actually building resonance rather than tearing resonance down. This is also true in I'm your lady and you are my man. Whenever you reach for me, I'll do all that. We're heading for something, somewhere I've never been. I am, I'm frightened by da 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 of the power of love. Right. How many times have we sat at a karaoke bar and we heard somebody just totally choke on that last note, but they sang the rest of the song kind of okay, right? Again, someone forgot to tell them that when they sang, we're heading for something, power of love. They already sang that note. If they'd known that before, do you think they'd have the same trouble singing that note at the end of the night? Or would they have paced themselves differently so that they could sing that note? Maybe not sing the line before, so the power of love, before they get to the note, right? The point is, is that as you start to grow and you start to learn about these things, you're gonna find out that it's no longer about the high note. It's about the placement on the chord, the vowel modification, good support, correct air, the correct use of airflow and posture. And once you get a hang of that, you're going to freak out and the sky is the limit. It's the coolest thing ever. All right, we're going to continue.